Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're going to be taking a look at another keyboard from Zoya, the LS01. This one is not in the GMK series, so from what I understand, does not have VIA as different software. It's basically a TKL that has a knob, but instead of the top three buttons, it has um, multimedia buttons. And as we can see the layout right here, there's the knob and there's the media controls. And it looks like we have fairly standard um, controls for everything else. It is a three mode uh, keyboard. It has a nice light next or between the escape and the function key, which is something that I actually like, um, especially if it shows like a caps lock indicator actually does something other than just match the RGB of the keyboard. Today, I will be including the KTT Kang White switch. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and take a look at what's in the box. It looks like we have a user manual here. So we also have a standard USB-C, the USB-A cable, and uh, there doesn't seem to be a cap puller. And here we are with the Zoya LS01. It's called a gaming keyboard in some of the listings that I've seen. I don't know if uh, that's because they're going with north facing as the other Zoyas, or at least the GMK ones, have been south facing. Um, it does appear we do have an IXPE sheet as well as a PET layer. One of the things that has been causing a lot of issues with some people is, um, especially if they haven't seen my videos, because I, I have made a couple of videos already, one specifically uh, for the GMK, 67 when they first started putting the uh, PET layer in there um, because they don't punch out the holes. None of the holes are punched out already. So if you go to take a switch and try to put it in a slot that has not been punched out, you're going to meet some resistance. And what you're ending up doing is actually pushing the entire plate down. And some people might use a little too much force, which could mean a popped hot swap socket. So First things first on practically any of these Zoya boards, especially the ones that have been coming out lately, is to go ahead and punch out the holes. I prefer to use a plastic spudger because it's not metal. And this one being a, um, this is a three mode. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. Yep, that's where it is. That's uh, kind of interesting. It does have a pocket. It has a whole panel. Um, hiding the 2.4 dongle. It is quite light, I got, got to say. Yeah, but we have the connector here. We have this blue highlighted, which I kind of like. I mean, it's a light blue, but I kind of wish, well, I guess they got it there and there. Mm, I, don't, I don't know. I think I might like it, but I'm still kind of on the fence of it. So anyway, let me go ahead and punch all of these out. Like I said, once you punch it out, you can see that you can go ahead and push the switch on in there and it goes in there just fine. Now, we do have a super flexi board. I cannot recommend plastic spudgers enough. Um, they can be found from many stores, but on Amazon, I think I'm able to get a pack of a hundred for like eight bucks. And um, I mean, the reason that I get a hundred is because sometimes the uh, tip will get dulled or sometimes this won't become as flat anymore. And I just move on to the next one. I don't, I, I've only thrown a couple of them away because they even have this hook, which helps to get little wires out of place. They're extremely handy tools. And because, and because they're made out of plastic, uh, there's very little risk of, um, you know, doing any damage. Like I said, we've got a battery in here, so we don't have to worry about, uh, if we hit the battery, we're not going to puncture it because it's just a plastic spudger. So let me go ahead and punch all of these holes out and we can continue on with the review. Now, like I said, also, especially with these flex cut boards, these can be quite handy when inserting switches as you can keep the plate up and ensure that the uh, switch is actually getting locked into the plate and see by pressing it up you're going to make sure that it's not only getting into the socket but it's also locking onto the plate which is going to be important if it's not all the way in 
um, you're going to have issues with it actuating. And I've seen a few people report that they think that their hot swap socket doesn't work or there's other issues when in all reality, they just haven't pushed it all the way into the sockets. It may have locked onto the plate, but it's, it's pushing the PCB down because it, it's not really locked into place. It just seems like it. So uh, spudgers are a great tool. If you're going to be working on uh, mechanical keyboards, I cannot recommend these enough. Just the specs. Today, we took a look at the Zoya LS01, also known as the GMK84, a three mode TKL. It comes weighing in at 527 grams and has a 3500 milliamp hour battery. It is a north facing three and five pin hot swap compatible PCB and has a gasket mounted PC plate with flex cuts that makes it quite flexy. The chin of this keyboard sits at 20 millimeters above the typing surface while the back sits at 30 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of seven degrees. Flipping out the first set of included feet will take the back up to 35 millimeters, changing the angle of typing to 10 degrees. And flipping out the final set of feet will give you a back height of 43 millimeters and a typing angle of 13 degrees. All right, here we are with the switches loaded up. I went ahead and put the KTT Kang whites in there. And, um, one thing that I, I did find out, um, and I'll put links down below, there is a PDF download of the instructions from the Boye website um, in English. So it just makes it a lot easier to understand. Now, if you push and hold the volume button and wait till this flashes, then it's going to change from a volume control to a light effects control. So you can cycle through all the different light effects. And again, press and hold, wait till this flashes, and we're back to volume control. So nice feature. I've seen a lot of uh, the knob keyboards uh, start to include that and makes it a little easier so you don't have to remember which keys you have to uh, use for changing the light effects out. So I just wanted to show real quick how it looked like with the um, LEDs in there as they are quite bright. Um, they have about five levels, but they're actually pretty bright um, for a North Facing keyboard. So for those of you that want the shine through key caps and want it to be on the top instead of the side, um, I think these are going to work quite well, especially if you're using clear top switches. The light should shine through and illuminate the entirety of the legend. Um, or at least the majority of it. So I'm going to go ahead and load up the keycaps and we'll come back to do my final thoughts and do the sound test. So I um, went ahead and decided to use these that I've actually had sitting around for a moment. They are um, Blue Samurai, Daisun Cherry with um, Harangas. Um, I don't remember what brand they are. They are fairly thick and should sound and look pretty good. I know the blue doesn't quite match, but I wanted to try to find something. I don't have a blue that's that, that light, but I figured maybe the blue, gold, and black would look good in contrast with the white. I'm gonna go ahead and load these keycaps up, finish up, and we'll do a sound test. And here we are with the LS01 or the GMK84. I've seen it go by both names, although it says LS01 on the box, so I'm just gonna go with that. Um, I'm actually quite surprised um, because it was lighter and everything. I just, I lowered my expectations a bit, but I'm actually surprised at how well it sounds. If you enjoy clacky builds, this is probably a good base to start from. from. Though with the proper mods, like a tape mod and perhaps putting maybe a denser foam or some kill mat or even silicone down at the lower half of the case, I think you could probably get more of a thocky sound. Now we do have the Kang whites in there. Again, they are lubed, so in my opinion, they are a tad deeper. Um, but I think like with the Gatoron Milky Yellows, we'd probably get maybe a deeper tone because we're dealing with nylon as opposed to PC tops um, on the Kang whites, but it's actually pretty nice.
Now, it is a bit flexier than I'm usually fond of. It's nothing that, I mean, I could use it no problem. Um, I tend to type a little bit harder, so all it really does is make it more of a bouncy feeling, but that's got that's because of the flex cuts on the plate. Um, with these die sub keycaps and uh, the KTT Kang whites, I think that this is actually performing quite well. It's actually exceeded my expectations, which is usually because I've, because I've reviewed so many keyboards, I've gotten to a point where I can kind of gauge how well I'm going to like it. Everyone likes keyboards differently, so, I mean, please understand these are all just my opinions, and, you know, some of you may agree with my opinions, some of you may not, but at least I can provide a baseline from which to gather your opinion from. But uh, I I've got to say, this is a pretty decent little kit, uh, especially for the price. I'm actually using this over 2.4, and I have not seen any stutters or anything, and I'm actually surrounded by dozens of 2.4 gigahertz wireless networks and usually 2.4 is a little spotty and i have to use bluetooth um, but the performance over 2.4 is really good i have not found anywhere that shows polling rate and i've yet to find a tool that's reliable and gives me you know actual polling rates so i can't speak as to that though i will reach out to boy and see if he has that information and updated in the video description below. Um, I, I've got to say, I, I'm actually, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised with this keyboard. I think that it, it does a good job for what it is, uh, for what it's offering. Um, like I said, with these die sub keycaps and the KTT Kang whites, it sounds pretty good. And I'm actually going to put it on my desk and use it as my daily for at least a little while. And, uh, at some point, I will come back to it, mod it up, and see if I can get some really deep sounds out of it. Um, though, maybe I'll go with a really clacky type of build. Maybe put some uh, some clickies in there, even. Anyway, going to leave you with a stock sound test of the GMK84 from Zoya, or the LS01. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on. <laughs>